Hi, Med. Multi shot. Can you please welcome to the stage Mr. Colin Spencer, CEO. Colin. Thank you, Um, Colin Spencer Hull, CG Executive of Hymid. Um, it's quite clear from uh, listening to the opening uh, speeches, there's quite a, quite a lot of synergy between the speakers. That's always encouraging that we're, we're all on message. Um, and I would like to just pick up and endorse on the um, points that the Mayor made. Um, I took a few minutes out when I arrived here just to have a look at the uh, the delegate list and and the and the, and the speakers and and I was really impressed with the the depth and quality of uh, of the people attending. Um, clearly, we have a wonderful opportunity uh, in Tall Bay. This is this is um, uh, reflected on the national basis. I've had the pleasure of speaking at uh, two national events in London recently. And uh, manufacturing and innovation is a great space to be in. And so we've got that opportunity to, uh, to, to create wealth through the knowledge and the capability that, uh, that's amongst uh, this forum. The, the key is harnessing it. And as we've already heard from at least one speaker, uh, working in isolation will not achieve that, that objective. Um, one of the seven uh, barriers to success in business is poor structure. If you get the right people in the right place, anything is, is, is achievable. Um, and um, Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, some of you may well know, has got a book out right now, and uh, the Harvard Business School and uh, business leaders are keen to learn how Sir Alex has built successful uh, teams for 27 <coughs> years uh, and his management and leadership style. Now, uh, I would be a, a ex, uh, I would be uh, stretching my imagination um, if I likened Hymid to Manchester United. Uh, I would say uh, old Hymid is probably a little bit more like uh, Torquay United, a bit predictable and always in the red. <laughs> so, how did we as a business transform? from old Hymid to new Hymid, and how did we make our vision happen? This is our story, um, and uh, if you detect some uh, uh, faces there that, that look surprised, expressions of uh, surprise, it's because we were surprised. Uh, Michael Portillo had just announced that Hymid Multishot Limited uh, were the uh, winners of the Manufacturing Excellence Award for business development and change management process. Uh, and you also declared that we were the outstanding winners in that category and an example of how a business can reinvent itself. It was a, a, a very proud moment, as you can imagine, uh, but it was also the culmination of five years' hard work. Uh, just prior to that, a few months before, we'd uh, relocated from our very uh, humble beginnings in Brixham to 18,000 square foot fit for purpose manufacturing space in, in Torquay. We now have the platform to grow the business and to become a world class manufacturer. And uh, for uh, any of you in the room that have never heard of Hymid, and I appreciate a little bit difficult these days, um, it, we are plastic injection molders and we specialise in a process known as two shot. And for the uh, non-technical like myself, uh, that's a moulded product from uh, two materials or two colours moulded together to make a high value product with <coughs> design features such as buttons, display windows and seals. Uh, our business model is uh, business to business and we supply three main sectors, medical, instrument and measurement and electronic enclosures. Uh, we're currently uh, on target for 2.8 million, so this year that's growth of about 38%, uh, and we're employing 34 full-time equivalent. We've been very fortunate in being either in the final or, or winners of several awards in the last couple of years. Um, 
even a couple of weeks ago, I was in Plymouth and we, uh, we were in the um, fast row 75. We went straight in at number 19, which was a bit of a surprise to me because I was expecting it to be 74th or something like that. So it was a great achievement. But uh, one of the ones that was most satisfying is that we uh, were awarded the South Devon Skills Award. And what was pleasing about this uh, was that uh, this was recognition of the investment that we put in our people and the training and development, which has been quite substantial. But it hasn't always been good news stories. And if I now turn the clock back to 2008 when our story began, uh, we had a somewhat different experience. Um, I received a call from uh, one of the founder members, uh, Mark Jones, inviting me to meet the uh, owners of the business. And the opening conversation was, Colin, um, we need to sell the business, we need to get out, we've had enough. And my response was, uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry to disappoint you, <laughs> this business is not for sale, this is a rescue, and time is not on your side. And to give you a flavour of uh, how bad things were, uh, back in 2008, uh, the, the sales dropped below about 850k, mainly because the business was exposed to one major customer who moved their, their business offshore. Um, the, uh, it was loss making, there was no cash, the banking relationship was strained at best, um, and the proverbial trap door with uh, old Hyman and 18 full time uh, uh, livelihoods was on the cusp of disappearing. Uh, to make matters worse, the founder members were all at war with each other, so they no longer had the same shared values. <coughs> Strange as it may seem, there was something that appealed to me about this business. I don't know whether it was the personal challenge or the untapped potential, uh, but it, it, was, uh, it was something that uh, uh, I, 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 liked, uh, I liked the people, I liked what, what they were trying to achieve. And so my proposition back in 2008 was very simple. I won't tell you guys how to make stuff if you don't tell me how to build a business. And we embarked on a journey together on that basis. And five years on, uh, they haven't thrown me out. So something clearly must have worked. And what was that something? Um, I could talk about the strategic model behind uh, the vision and the business. In fact, there, there are several of you in the room who will know that model very well if you've had any associations with Beacon Southwest. Um, I, I, I could talk about the three founder members who back in 2008 used to wear blue coats and had their heads in the machines. Now they're directors of their business. Um, and I would also say that uh, although I, from time to time, give the founder members a bad press, the one thing I would say to them, there wasn't an ego amongst them. And, and in order to uh, facilitate a change platform, uh, that, that, was, that was very helpful. Uh, what I would like to talk about are people and partnerships and some of the initiatives behind those <coughs> key changes. Here's Team Jaime, and uh, there's probably a story behind each one of these uh, smiling faces. Um, we always had a willing workforce. Uh, that, that was never, never in question. But there was a lot of tinkering going on. Uh, and not a lot of standard practice. The management style was survivalist, uh, passive, poor decision making, bordering on the secretive. I used to accuse them of running the Kremlin. Um, the, the, um, the business uh, was open for business, but actually we never bothered to tell anybody. Uh, it, it was all very, uh, it was all very uh, inward looking. Um, and uh, this, this, this was the platform for, 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 for old Hyman. Um, and process, yes, we, we, we did lots of process. In fact, on a good day, I would accuse us of being busy fools. Uh, poor productivity, poor value-adding capability, and therefore the business was suspect. One of the, uh, one of the first in initiatives uh, was um, something we call the state of the nation. And, and this exists uh, even to this day. And it's, uh, we get the staff together, and the agenda is some headline uh, trading figures. What's the business doing financially? What's happening outside the business? What's happening inside the business? And we would then develop some sort of interactive or, or game to focus uh, on the fundamentals uh, around those headings and to get some communication going. Um, and um, the, I, I recall the first State of the Nation uh, meeting very well. We were, we were in Brixham in those days. And, we didn't have a meeting facility, 
So it was a, a, a pilot in the, in, the, in the car park on a good day. We got the, uh, the flip chart up and uh, assembled the staff. And um, even some of the neighbouring uh, businesses that stood in the doorways and looking out of the windows thinking, what's this nutter up to? But it was a way of communicating uh, within the business. And so I used, started to scope some headline trading figures with a lot of red in those days. And I glanced over to the three founder members, and in unison, they were completely ashen. I didn't, I didn't think they were going to survive the day. I didn't think I was going to survive the day. But survival we did, and it set the tone for Heimlich going forward. A policy of openness with ourselves, with our staff, with our stakeholders, and with our business relationships. And it worked for Hyman. The, the second key change and key factor was that we employed a marketing assistant. Now you might say there's nothing terribly special in that. Um, but you must bear in mind that Heimig was a very traditional engineering business, full of technical people, uh, very inward looking, very parochial. And we employed a young lady called Miss Victoria Broadbent, which is here today, and she's probably not going to thank me for this little uh, feature. But what we liked about Victoria was her drive and enthusiasm. She brought something different to the party, and that's what we needed. And um, we gave her a blank piece of paper and said, what are you going to do for us? And the response was, I'm going to market and develop the Heimlich brand through social media marketing. We, you know, we looked at us because none of us understood this stuff, but Victoria did, and, 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 and that was her, was her remit. And she promoted the Heimlich brand beyond the four walls of the, of the factory to people that we want to do business with, people that might bring business to us, and um, people who've got the next widget with wings, new product development. And it was a very powerful uh, strategy, and, and it's worked uh, very well. One of her first ideas was uh, a roadshow called Flash the Bang. And we take this roadshow around the country and um, it's a, uh, a product design process. Andy Techmar, one of my colleagues, does the design for manufacture uh, piece. Um, and then we share the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, process with, uh, with other partners, uh, designers, prototypers, uh, uh, packaging people, IP practitioners. We get very strong audiences uh, wherever we go, people who want to be there, people who actually want to uh, convert concept into pound notes. And, 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 it's, and it's been a very successful way of promoting the Heimlich brand. Now there are a number of partners and strategic partners in the room, too many for me to, to mention by, by name and individually today. But I would say they've all played a vital role in the, in the journey that Heimlich has, uh, has been on. Um, and, and partnering and strategic partners is vital to that. But one of the most prominent strategic partners is the Manufacturing Advisory Service, one of the uh, key sponsors today. Uh, we have worked extensively with NAS for eight years. It's one of the first uh, outside agencies that I introduced into Heimlich. Um, and initially, they underpinned our strategy uh, from a manufacturing perspective and then delivered uh, manufacturing ap applications such as 5S, Lean, and more recently, uh, Six Sigma. Uh, Linda Adams, Paul Gilbert, Phil House, John Horrell, just to name a few, have been regular visitors to Highland, and they've made a significant impact in the way we do business. Um, I, 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 and the out, net outcome of that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is, is that uh, our productivity uh, has increased by about 70%. We're now running at 90%, uh, 90K, forgive me, 90K per head, which puts us at a high-end machine. Uh, our our value-adding capability has increased by about 12%, and we're in the top 30 of all plastic injection molders in the country. I think there's about 1,000 in, in total, and we're in the top 30. Um, and uh, our GVA this year uh, is 1.1 million. It's been a significant impact on, on the value that we've created within a business. Um, and, and it's all about being about people, uh, systems and, and processes. So I would thoroughly recommend uh, uh, engaging with them. Um, I would also like to mention at this juncture the, um, uh, the, the, the High Tech Forum, our, our host today. 
Um, we, are, we are perceived as key players of the forum, uh, to which we, we greatly appreciate, um, but we share the vision. We get it. We, we, we understand what they're trying to do. We also like to share our experience with others within the group. Uh, that's part of our ethos. We aspire to become a sparrant or a syntech, uh, and, and that's, that, that's our aspiration. But we also like to influence the agenda, and you can't do that from the sidelines. Uh, the challenge, if I may say, is translating the goodwill into intellectual capital. Uh, and one of the ways of doing that, as you've already heard, is to promote the collective knowledge that we have uh, within this forum out beyond the promenade into the wider region, into the UK, internationally, um, and, and to the halls of, uh, of power. Only last week, Andy Tetmar and myself, Andy is an, a Torbay ambassador, we were uh, invited to attend the uh, annual skills forum at the House of Commons. We were rubbing shoulders with, with the big, big employers. In fact, what was very nice is we walked into the reception area of the House of Commons and we actually met up with Jim Godman from uh, Westerns, who was a familiar face to us. So that, that, was, that was great, that we were associated with the big employers. Um, good for Hymid and good for uh, the Torbay um, uh, area and, and economy by association. Now, nothing uh, illustrates the transformation between old Hymid and new Hymid than these next two images. And here's uh, old Hymid. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when a bunch of engineers are put in charge of marketing and branding. It's confusing, and it certainly doesn't work. <coughs> By comparison, here's the, some of the images from new Hymid. Developing a specialist brand as a manufacturer, promoting that brand beyond the factory to people who we want to do business with, investing in new equipment and technologies to make us more valuable and add more value, investing in our people uh, through training and development, investing in young people through the engagement with the apprenticeship service uh, and working in collaboration with South Devon College, um, and engaging in the schools program. Um, we hosted a, uh, an event uh, last year, an innovation day with four schools and colleges. It was hugely successful and, and probably the highlight, highlight of the year for Highland. Um, it, it was very enriching and, and I think we're, uh, we're going to uh, repeat the exercise in a few weeks from now. Engaging with uh, support agencies such as MAS and Growth Accelerator and being part of, of, of other um, uh, partnerships, strategic partnerships, as you've already <coughs> heard. And then benchmarking ourselves uh, against our peers, sometimes as a learning exercise, sometimes successfully winning. This is New Hymid, and this is how, what has made our vision happen. Now, one of the favorite questions I ask uh, at Hymid is what next? Uh, and um, I, I practice what I preach. I have handed over the baton to a full-time commercial managing director, Tom McMurtry OBE, and Tom now has a mandate from the board to drive the business forward over the next five years and create the next vision. Um, the key change project will all be around uh, design for cost, value, and quality, moving from a machine-led business to a, to a knowledge-based business. Uh, that, that, that's the journey. Uh, the leadership style may be somewhat different, but uh, I dare say that the core values of Hyman will uh, remain the same. My, uh, my thanks to the High Tech Forum for this opportunity of presenting today. My thanks for you, to you for, for, for listening. And um, no matter where you are on your journey in making your vision happen, there's always one theatre of dreams. Thank you.